It continues on in verse 6 and says, And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over me. So the promise here, again, conditional on obedience, again, conditional on them being careful to hear his voice and being observant to keeping those commandments. He says, you shall be richly blessed, as I promised, lending to many, but never borrowing, reigning over many, but never having these nations reigning over you. Obviously, obedience was always there, and obviously that stipulation of the release was always part of their economy, and so they would get very rich. They would get very powerful, but then hey, God would just equalize it in the nation so that there would never be that covetous spirit coming over his people Israel. But look, nowadays, the Jews, the synagogue of Satan, wicked false Israel that's over there in the Middle East, and their little splinter cells that are set up in New York City and in other parts of the world under that Kabbalist, Judaistic, um, Federal Reserve system, that synagogue of Satan type of today, they'll look at a verse like this and see, oh, look, God promised us that, what? We're going to lend to many nations. And we're never going to borrow. And God promised that we're going to reign over many nations. We'll never be ruled over. And so they've set up this wicked system under what they perceive as an unconditional promise of God. Okay, read the context. It's easy to debunk that, right? The Judaism and the Kabbalah and all of these, these wicked synagogues of Satan types, the Rothschilds, etc., have set up a system where they've tried to basically make these promises come true in their own life. And instead of realizing that God here is showing grace unto nations around them and people around them, they've used these promises to basically overlord people and destroy people. They've made money and merchandise off the people of this world through rebellion to the scriptures, in essential. They, they, they use deceit. They use scams. They use wickedness. They fund both sides of wars and then just reap the benefit of of murder of millions of people and suffering of nations at large. They rule over Hollywood and all of the stuff that goes on there. The smut industry is entirely theirs, and they think they're delivered to do these things. Why? Because God promised us that we would rule over these people. Who are these, right? God promised that we would lend unto these people, and we would be able to make merchandise of them as a result of our heritage and our being God's chosen people. They've monopolized entire industries. They've, they've impoverished entire nations and brought them to ruin just so they can reap of their reserves, reap of their benefits, reap of what they have um, industry-wise and also just natural resource-wise. They've destroyed, they've brought ruin in there just like their father, the devil, who sought to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the ministry and the work of the devil in the synagogue of Satan is exactly like them. And this is what we see in our world from those that take the promises of God and use them in lasciviousness and use them in a lying sense and, and, and think that they apply to them and they are above reproach and above rebuke. But they've forgotten that they had to observe the voice of the Lord God and keep his commandments. And those are so far away from them, they have no interest in keeping such things. And so, ultimately, they will be brought to ruin. But what a blessing it would have been if a righteous group of Israelites would have gotten a hold of a command like this and started a nation based on principles like this. I see something like that and, you know, myself being on the opposite side of creditors for much longer than seven years, if you look all the way back to when I started school, because I believe that that was the thing that everybody does is just borrow a bunch of money and go to school for a piece of paper, <laughs> you know. I've been under creditors for much longer than seven years. If you've owned a house, you've been under creditors for much longer than seven years. If, if you, you go to school, if you bought a car, all these different things that we've become creditors for, God wanted a release. God wanted a, a, a righteous dealing among his people where he would equalize everything. And certainly the person that is always a borrower, I mean, when that release happens, they're going to borrow again. I, I mean, that's, that's just the nature of things. But 
And the, and the one that is, is wise with his money and the one that is smart and able to be a creditor, certainly he's going to do better on the other side of the release and it's going to basically equalize and then go right back in the same direction. But what it's trying to keep from, what he, I believe, God is trying to do is to keep from it just getting so ridiculous where the rich are beyond rich and the poor are beyond poor. You know, there's a website called Spend Bill Gates Money and you can sit there and there's all these things, right? That, that like a Ferrari and a mansion and a house in the hills and a house in the, in, on the beach and a whole island and all these things. It's called Spend Bill Gates Money and his dollars are on the top. When I heard you can just start clicking on Ferraris, 25 Ferraris, and just watch, the money doesn't even move. You can't even put a dent on it. You literally can't spend that much money <laughs> because it just keeps accumulating and the, the interest rates alone will bury you in trying to spend this thing. Tough problem to have, right? But that shows you the imbalance that happens when we don't do things God's way. Would to God that a nation would start up and one day, you know, we just sang how beautiful heaven must be. There it is. Just a little piece of how finances will work there. It gives you the impression that finances are really nothing. That finances are really a, a moot point. They're, they're a means to an end. They're not like they are th today where we essentially worship them. That's all we think about some days. It, it's all of our stresses. It's all of our victories. It's all of our rejoicing. It's all of our hurts. It seems like the whole world just revolves around the almighty dollar. They've made a god of it, haven't they? Nevertheless, one day, all things will be set to norm. The final, I believe, year of release will be when everyone who's indebted to, to our sins and to our, our struggles and to this life and the tears and the suffering, everything will be released and set to norm. Those that didn't believe will go to hell and that'll be just set. Those who have believed will go to heaven and things will just be set so. The final release. 